This is a, another edition of Glass House to Go. And what we're doing is taking the Bible studies, the church services that we do uh, as Glass House, we're taking some of those out on the road. And the idea there, again, is to integrate the idea that biblical truth isn't just for inside the church walls, but it actually is truth to go, that we should be able to take it with us wherever we find ourselves. So if we find ourselves in a park, we find ourselves at a family gathering, we find ourselves visiting friends, whatever, uh, truth should go with us and not just be left uh, inside the church walls. So that's what we're doing with these glass house to goes. And as you might know, if you look at a calendar, uh, this is actually uh, July 4th weekend. Now it's a funny one because of the way the calendar falls. Uh, July 4th isn't until Wednesday, uh, but a lot of people are trying to figure out when or if they get that uh, three-day weekend and all that sort of thing. But we're celebrating it here today. And uh, where we find ourselves today uh, is at the War Memorial Park. This is in Mooresville, North Carolina. Uh, it happens to be uh, a gymnasium that's right behind me here. And uh, this is a place where our school has played lots of of games and other things, and our families come here for picnics and whatnot. But this is known as War Memorial uh, Gym right here, and this used to be known as War Memorial Park, but they've renamed it Liberty Park. And I love the fact that they tied those two together because uh, when you look behind me here, if you look on the wall here, you might not be able to make it out, but this is actually medallions. This is recognition of the different armed force branches. So you have Air Force, you have Army, you have Navy, uh, specifically the Marine Corps, you have um, Navy beyond that, and then you have also the Coast Guard. And so uh, this will figure in very prominently to today's talk. And what I wanted to talk with you about uh, is basically three declarations. Um, the July 4th holiday, the July 4th designation, is known as the Declaration of Independence, right? That's what uh, it's known for that in 1776, we declared independence, right? We declared independence from uh, the British, and so there we are now our own independent country. But I think about the word independence. Independence could be healthy, it could be unhealthy. And so there's three words that I want to speak on with you today in light of this uh, holiday and this time on our calendar, which is three declarations. A declaration of independence, a declaration of dependence, and a declaration of interdependence. Now, the first thought that I have here is that we should be dependent on God, right? We should be dependent on God. So uh, one of the declarations I'm hoping you have made and that you continually make every day of the year is declaration of dependence, a dependence on God, that God, I can't do things apart from you. And when we think about this, this has always been a part of our country. It's been from the beginning, we were a nation under God. We were a nation that understood, hey, we want to be independent from uh, the rule of others, but we don't want to be independent from the rule of God in our life. And so when I think about that, a declaration of independence from one thing can be a declaration of dependence on something else. And again, that declaration of independence uh, what I'm hoping you'll think about first with that declaration, the declaration of independence from the world's ways and the world's influence in your life. And what I mean by that is there's a healthy independence that each one of us should have. It's my goal as a pastor, it's my goal as a parent, it's my goal as a teacher, that anyone around my life would not really be dependent on my life, but in fact would be uh, having and growing in a healthy independence. Now, again, the first dependence we have, the declaration of dependence, is a dependence on God. But I also want to talk to you about the independence from the world. Uh, the, the scriptures say in, in Romans chapter 12 that we should not be conformed any longer to the ways of the world. So that's saying, hey, you can declare independence from all of the influences that would seek to try to take you away from what you know God wants you to do. And so there are times when independence is perfectly a uh, wonderful goal. 
But then the dependence on God, I don't want to declare independence from God. It's actually in declaring dependence on God that I find my freedom, that I find my liberty. That's exactly what Scripture says in so many places, in so many ways, that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And then the last word that I wanted to share with you today is interdependence. A declaration of interdependence. So there's three declarations that I'm hoping each life would have to have a spiritual health. And the first one is the declaration of dependence on God. But then there's the declaration of independence from the world and its influences on me. But then there's the declaration of interdependence, the recognition that I need other people. It's not just me and God and, hey, me and God against the world. No, in fact... There are people that God will put into your life for interdependence. Now, let me give you some thoughts surrounding this. Again, we picked the place very purposefully because this is a spot that I've come to before and, you know, just had one of those times of standing here and remembering how many people have fought for my liberty, how many people have fought for my freedom. And again, these medallions are representative of different branches of military. And if you've been around military people in any way, they will all argue about which one is the best, right? Uh, they, they will say, the Air Force people will be saying, oh, Air Force, you know, we're, we're the best. And then you got the Marines who will say, no, 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 no. Uh, we know what we're doing, and the Air Force just flies over and observes and things like that. And when I think about that, there would be good-natured independence, you know, that, that people say, like, hey, we can, do, we can get the job done. But there's an interdependence of all of these together. And I can assure you, that no Navy person is going to say to an Air Force person, well, I don't care whether, nothing ha whether you succeed or you fail in your mission. They're not going to say that because there's a sub-mission. They're all sub to the mission, right? There's a mission that's greater for all of these that they work together. There's an interdependence. And so each one has a role. Each one has a part to play in victory. And so when I think about that, again, a declaration of independence includes a declaration of interdependence. It, it has to be that way in my life. If I'm going to have healthy relationships with my wife, with my kids, with my family, with my friends, with my coworkers, with the strangers on the street, whatever it might be, there has to be some degree of healthy independence where I'm not just dependent on everybody to do anything for me. But at the same time, I have to recognize an interdependence in my life. There are things where I can tell someone, hey, you're going to have to depend on God for that. And that's good. They're making a declaration of dependence on God. And each person needs to do that. And so I think about the military branches. That one's certainly one. But I think about it in our own household. And again, my job as a parent, I think, is to work myself out of a job. Uh, my role <laughs> as a parent is to work myself out of the role of a parent. Right. And, and what I mean by that is I can declare my kids as dependents, you know, through certain years on taxes and all that sort of thing. But even the government recognizes at some point, hopefully, each human on the planet is moving towards some degree of independent living, some degree of capacity to make their own decisions and deal with their own choices and consequences. And I think about it this way. We were reflecting on this, that our middle daughter there, Bethany, she actually went off to college at age 17 and a week. She had just turned 17 when she went off to college. It just was the way the calendar fell out. And when we think about that, uh, looking back on it, you're like 17. She was actually, we were living in Florida at the time, and she went to school all the way in, in Philadelphia. And so here's this person who's about to be independent, right? And what we did as parents in the last year that she was staying at home with us, so the you know 16 to 17 range, we actually did some things that some people would think were, was absolute insanity. Because I actually told her, uh, as, a, as a person in my home, hey, guess what? The last year you're here, it's always been my roof, my rules, but the last year you're here, it's my roof, your rules. Um, and the reason I was doing that is, is an attempt for her to get ready for independence, to make that declaration of independence from us as a family and to do it in the best and healthiest possible way. So rather than asking my permission for anything as a parent in the last year of her time at our house, she actually didn't have to ask for my permission. What she had to do was explain her decision. 
Um, so all we would do is say like, okay, you tell me why you think that's a good idea. You don't need my permission to do it. You can do it whether it's a good or bad idea, but please at least involve us in the process. What was that? That was a transition from a declaration of dependence. Mom, what should I wear? Mom, should I brush my teeth? Mom, what time should I go to bed at night? Or should I go to sleep at night? And all those types of things to a declaration of independence where, again, our job was to work ourselves out of a job that hopefully in college she's not calling us and saying, hey, Dad, should I brush my teeth tonight? You go, well, just the one you want to keep. Just brush the one you want to keep, which is what I've been telling them since they were kids, you know. And so the goal is, the goal is, whether I'm there or not, that the wisdom of adult living has somehow been transferred from the adults to the kids. And when I think about that, this is really the process that God has in each one of our lives. Are we to declare independence from God? I don't need God anymore. No, it's a change in the role and the reason that God relates to us. I think about how Jesus, when he was about to leave physically from the planet, he told his disciples, it's better for you if I go away. And they went like, no, it isn't. I mean, when you're around, we get free food. Uh, when you're around, uh, like fish have money in their mouth for taxes and all that kind of stuff. How could it possibly be better if, if you go away? And he said, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send my spirit inside you so that whether I'm beside you or not, you're still going to make the decisions of wisdom that you would have made had I been there physically beside you. And I think about that, that is an amazing thought as a parent and as a pastor. Uh, I, I think of so many things that are going on in our life right now, but part of Glass House to Go is even a recognition that uh, when people have truth in their life, they don't need a personal pastor following them around and making sure that they're always sitting in a seat every Sunday and saying, like, okay, I'm going to transfer truth to you every Sunday in this way. That in fact... Uh, I had a friend ask me, well, well, it, it, let's say that you don't have church services and, and somebody's not there. I mean, how are, how are they going to grow spiritually? And I said to myself, well, man, um, I'm hoping that they're growing spiritually in such a way that my role becomes less and less crucial in their life day to day. See, I think back to a pastor who had a great influence on me and he was a phenomenal guy. He taught for 40 years in the same place, founded a church, taught in that church for 40 years. And when he was going on to do some different things and different people were taking over for him, there was a lady at his church who came up and said, Pastor so-and-so, you can't go away. I depend on you for my spiritual growth. And that's when he said to her, well, then I must go away and I must go away quickly. Because if for 40 years you've sat under my teaching and you have no more capacity to go put those things into practice without me there, well, then maybe I've fostered a dependency that isn't healthy. And so when I think about that, again, scripturally speaking, my goal, my desire so often is that uh, our kids, let me give you another example. Our kids, when they were growing up, uh, I would use... I would use these phrases that I was hoping would stick into their mind. And so when they were riding their bike, I would come, we'd come up to an intersection. I'd say, watch for cars, watch for cars, watch for cars. I didn't just say it once. I said it constantly. Like I was some kind of machine saying, watch for cars, look both ways, watch for cars, watch for cars. And it's so funny because if I go bike riding with my kids today, they come up to an intersection, they go, watch for cars, watch for cars, mind your, you know, look, at, look both ways and all this. I don't even have to be there anymore. And that was part of my goal is that they would make good choices and good decisions whether I was there or not. And I have less need to be right there saying it over and over and over again. And for me, the ultimate victory is if someday I hear them with their own kids coming up to an intersection intersection saying watch for self-driving cars you know watch for flying cars or whatever to their kids and that's when I'll know ah my job is complete my role is diminished because it's actually a wonderful thing when you have that declaration of independence that healthy independence that somebody has and so thinking again about this thought and I'm wrapping it up here but I, I think about people who are codependent they use that as a word in, in psychology and other times, you know, in counseling, family counseling or whatever, 
Codependent is when two people need each other to go race to the bottom. And what I mean by that, if there's someone who's a liar and there's someone who covers for all their lies, well, each of those people need each other to do what they do, but they do less uh, well because of each other. They're actually helping each other race to the bottom of the barrel. But an interdependence is a positive and healthy thing. And what does that mean? Well, it means that each person understands that we're better together. And I don't have every gift that you have. I don't have every ability you have. And let me read from 1 Corinthians 12. This is such an amazing passage. And it's right before the love chapter. The love chapter is always read at, at weddings, right? 1 Corinthians 13. But 1 Corinthians 12 comes right before that. And I love the way it does because it says this. He's talking about it. He says, the, he's talking about the body of Christ. And what he means is our interdependence with one another. Remember, the declaration of dependence on God, the declaration of independence from needing everyone else to live my life and think my thoughts for me. But then there's the interdependence, which is the recognition that I do need other people. I need the friends that I have. I need the family that God has given me. I need the influences that God has given because I am not a one-person army, right? I am not an army of one. And, and so when you think about this, this is what it says. The fa in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand... I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If an ear should say, I don't know how an ear talks, but it says, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And see what's great about that, it even says that each of the gifts given to different people are given for the common good. What does that mean? That means we're better together. It means we need us, right? That's what it means. It means I need you, you need me in different ways. And again, not for me to think for you, not for me to live my life for you, but to live my life alongside in such a way that we're better together. And this would be my ultimate goal, again, for my kids, for my friends, for my own relationships, that I would, first of all, make a personal declaration daily of dependence upon God. I cannot have a healthy relationship with myself or anyone else apart from a healthy relationship with God and realizing, hey, I need Him daily. But also, at the same time, there's a declaration of independence where I'm like, you know what? I don't need my wife to think for me. Or I don't need her to be spiritual for me. I don't need somebody else to think that way. I've, I've tried, we've tried to raise our kids in a way that whether we're there or not, they know God is there. And they know God's word is there in their life. And they can go look at it. And it, again, is a wonderful thing when they might ask and call or, or have a question. I appreciate them seeking that counsel. But at the same time, it's a wonderful thing when I realize they made a great decision apart from me. They even made a different direction than I might have thought. But wow, look at God lead them. And I love seeing that in a person's life. And then the interdependence, I think this is a big one because, again, it's represented by what we see here. If you want to win the spiritual war, you're not going to do it on your own. You're going to do it alongside others. And when I think about what that means, well, I think about it, the unity and diversity. And I can just use my own example with my wife for this. Uh, we, as I mentioned last week, we did the... Uh, and during the, during the renovation, got out of the house because, hey, there's nothing like seeing the outdoors and realizing hey, the whole world is not a bathroom uh, renovation. You know, you can come out here and go, yes, God's doing a very nice job out here. Um, but one of the things that we do is we have a division of labor. And historically in our, in our relationship, here's what it is. I call Lynn the coupon queen, and I mean that in the most honorable way possible. Um, she's my queen, but she's the coupon queen. She can find a bargain like nobody I've ever seen. She is the hunter-gatherer in that sense. She goes out and finds crazy things for, for no money. Uh, but here's the one caveat, one problem, is that my role in the relationship is to figure out how to get it home and get it connected. So uh, just this last week, she found a tremendous uh, chandelier. Uh, that was, well, I actually found two of them, uh, but found two different chandeliers for our renovation. 
And it was like, these are great. And she got them at a fraction, a tiny, tiny fraction of what something of this quality actually costs. But then she brings it home and basically dumps it there and says, make it work. And, uh, you know, when I, when I think about that, I actually enjoy that. I actually can grumble sometimes about it, but I actually feel a sense of accomplishment because there's a gift I have that she doesn't. She has a gift I don't have. I don't have the gift of finding that thing and finding the fit and having the aesthetic look and going, yeah, that's going to look good in this room. But I can make a chandelier light up. See, and here's the thing. If she brought it home and put it in the garage, it's not going to do anything. It's going to sit there forever because she doesn't know how to connect that. Does that mean she's not smart? No, she's very smart. She could probably figure it out even better than I can. But the thing is, what we can do is we can work together to make things better. So we, in our relationship, have, first of all, a declaration of dependence. We depend on God. We're like, uh, the two of us would not have made it this far if God had not been working daily in our life. And then we have a certain degree of a declaration of independence, a healthy independence. I'm not like every day saying, hey, Len, uh, the, should I put on shoes today? Hey, Len, do you think a shower would be a good idea? Uh, at some point, she'd be going like, make a decision as an adult, right? But then there's an interdependence in our relationship that we look at it and say, you know what? You have things I don't, uh, and we're better together. And so if you were to go into our house and turn on that chandelier, it's a team effort. It, the truth is she found it and I made it light up. But you know what? We, there's still a dependence. I didn't go like, well, I made the electricity. Um, I didn't make the electricity, right? There's people who did things I didn't do and can't do. And so when you realize those three declarations of a healthy life, they're all over the scripture that we would be dependent in the areas we should be dependent. When we should recognize, look, I need God and without him I am nothing. That we would have a healthy independence. That we wouldn't be asking and polling every person to find out what we should do. Or being, you know, decade after decade dependent on spiritual input in our life from some professional. When God is like, here's the word. I mean, you've got it too. You've got a Bible. Yeah, look it up. Learn it. Live it. Love it. And those leaders who lead you toward that, see, again, as a teacher, I actually want our students to graduate. <laughs> That's actually a good thing. I don't want to go like, this kid here has been in my high school class for 25 years. And I go, well, that's not a positive review to me. A positive review is they learned what they need to learn, they lived it, and they're out teaching and making their own great decisions apart from that teacher. And then when I think about that, the interdependence is the recognition that we're better together. And so I hope in July 4th, first of all, you will recognize and remember people who fought for your physical freedom, your liberty, right? Be, if, you, if you know one of them, thank them for their service. But you know what also? God fought for our liberty too. He didn't fight for our, our slavery. He didn't say like, hey, I want you to like live a constrained and, and constricted life. No, in fact, the Bible says that Again, God opens up pasture, that there's a narrow gate into truth. Truth has a narrowness to it, but it also has a freedom to it where he says, I, I set you free to, to pasture, to, to, to live your life, to enjoy your life, to make choices that lead to great consequences. And so, again, that interdependence, that independence, that dependence, that's what we're here to do. And before I go, I just wanted to uh, do a quick shout out to... Uh, Guy Gooch, he's a, a person who has been an enormous blessing to my life and to others. And he watched last week uh, from, from where he was. And he does a lot of uh, work with special needs kids in different places. And uh, again, I can't begin to tell you what an inspiration his life's been to mine. But uh, he actually wrote a note about somebody who he had heard last week's teaching and applied it to his own life. But he said later ran into somebody uh, out in a public place and took the thoughts that he had learned from that and applied them and he ministered right in that moment to this person and then gave her the link and said you should watch this teaching and she said oh man it was perfect it was just what I needed and so again the goal the thought uh, is that these truths would not just be for here uh, even out here but they would be to go that, that your homework assignment would be to somehow 
assess those three declarations. Are there areas in my life where I need to declare more dependence on God? Um, are there areas in my life where I need to declare more independence from relying on people to do what I am supposed to do? There's plenty in the Bible that says, no, that one's on you. That one's not on someone else. That one's, <laughs> you need to be independent in your thought on that. You need to declare independence from the world's ways or maybe even undue influence and unhealthy influences in your life. And then the last one is that declaration of interdependence. If you've uh, become one of those people who thinks, hey, it's just me and God and that's all I need, uh, that's not what God's Word says. That's not what God's Word teaches, that we do need each other and we're better together. So look for all three of those declarations in your own life and don't just take it for here, take it to go. God bless.